In this video, we're in the multiple linear regression setting, and we're going to look at ridge regression. This is part two, so if you missed part one, I'd recommend going back and looking at it. There we developed some of the notation, and we looked at how ridge regression and the ridge estimator reduces the overall variance in our estimates. But at what cost? And the cost is they're slightly biased. So part two is looking at bias in the ridge estimators. So in the least squares regression or least squares setting, it, it's unbiased. We showed the expected value of the, the least squares estimator is equal to beta, and so there's no bias. But in the in the multicollinearity setting, and that would be the reason that you use ridge regression, the variances are inflated with our estimates. Now let's look at the bias associated with the ridge estimator. And we plug in what we know about it so this is the ridge estimator of course with y but the expected value goes into the y and leaves the constants here um, expected value of of y is x beta now we write factor out of beta and now we want to kind of get a, a better expression for this so note that if we take this matrix and it's like in inverse we get the identity then we multiply that into each of those and we get this. So now if we subtract this to that side and subtract the i over, then we get an expression for this, which is this expression. And so this is the bias associated with the ridge estimator. Now let's look at some of its asymptotic properties. That as the uh, sh uh, shrinkage estimator or the um, shrinkage parameter I mean goes to infinity um, this is diagonally dominant right though that K gets so large bigger than those and there's a whole mathematical field that deals with diagonally dominant matrices but this one it, al it almost becomes 1 over K you know a diagonal 1 over K and then that K cancels and you get the inverse so we're not going to go into much more detail than that but it ends up being a minus beta. So asymptotically, the ridge estimator is biased with a minus beta. That's, and that's sort of the maximum bias. Now let's look at the mean square error here. That um, Here we're looking at each component. Like th this is a vector. And we take the first component and first component and square it, you know, that difference. And then add it to the second component. And that's what we're doing here. Now, um, so, the, and, and I guess it's not mean square error, but it's the, um, you know, it's the squared bias. So here, um, this, in vector notations, this, right? So it, here you can see it better that these are vectors and the standard inner product is the squared length so we're looking at the magnitudes or the lengths of this vector now let's plug in what we know about um, you know let's take the transpose and then um, write out what this expected value is well actually we just did it it's up here so we could plug that in here and plug that in here and then when we take the transpose we get this so the minus and minus cancel to a plus, we get a k squared. Uh, the transfer's beta is right here, and then this times itself, we get two of them, and it's beta. We Then we write the spectral decomposition of x transpose x, and I have a video called spectral decomposition, if you want to look at that, and we also go into more detail in part one. We write it as VDV, where V are the orthonormal eigenvectors, D is a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues, associated with that and so this is the identity matrix and of course we have B now we left factor out of V and right factor out of V transpose and then distribute the minus 2 and that's what we get here okay now this is a diagonal element and the inverse is easy because it's just one over the diagonal elements but it's squared so we get this um, Oh, I guess from here to here, I just note that the inverse of V prime is V, and then we get the squared. 
the inverse of v is v prime and we still have the squared and then we just keep this um, well we take the k since it's inverse it's one over and you can write it like this so then to emphasize it's a diagonal matrix we write it like this and then like I said diagonal means you can take one over and we get this now note that the shrinkage parameter as it goes to infinity this goes to zero and it's just a it's a diagonal matrix of, which is the identity matrix right now so that means the limiting value of this uh, squared bias is is this but then the, this is the identity matrix so it's just the length of the beta vector so a few notes here V contains orthonormal eigenvectors V squared also contains orthonormal eigenvectors not the same ones because we're squaring it we're manipul manipulating so here's a proof so if it contains orthonormal eigenvectors that says that V V prime is the identity and V prime V is the identity matrix. So let's see if that property holds here. V squared, V prime squared. Um, we write it out. That's the identity, that's the identity. So it is the identity. And you can go in reverse. That's the identity, that's the identity. But this is V prime squared, V squared. So they are set a set of some orthonormal eigenvectors. Uh, note two, positive definite matrix implies all eigenvalues are positive, and that's an if and only if. Um, so here in, in the diagonal matrix, and so I'm going to flash back for a second. So we just derived this expression right here. And so what we want to do is look at this matrix, this quadratic form in more detail. Right? That's, that's what we're doing here. So we were at this step, all eigenvalues are positive. So note that everything is positive here, positive, positive. So all the diagonal elements are positive. And this is a set of orthonormal eigenvectors. So this is the spectral decomposition for some positive definite matrix. I mean, you can call it A or call it whatever you want. So this is a positive definite matrix. So when we multiply this out, I mean, we always, we're always going to, right, since that's a positive different matrix, and this is, beta can be anything, this is always going to be positive, okay? So now, let's take the derivative of this expression. And in this expression, everything's constant but, but the diagonal matrix. And we're taking it with respect, the derivative with respect to K, the shrinkage parameter, and, and then that's easy to show that it equals this. But because this is another positive definite matrix, everything is positive here. The diagonal elements, those are orthonormal eigenvectors. So that's a, that's a spectral decomposition of some positive matrix, you know, positive definite matrix. And then beta can be anything, and so it's always positive. When, of course, beta is not equal to zero. So that tells us that this uh, quantity here is strictly increasing in K, the shrinkage parameter, with an upper bound of beta transpose, beta transpose. So that's kind of cool in itself. So now one more thing that I missed on video one, we were talking about how it shrinks the variance, but what does it do to the variance inflation factors? And remember the variance inflation factor is the variance uh, the multiple of the variance of the ideal case. And I have a uh, videos um, called variance inflation factors, and I think it's video 41. It is video 41 in this playlist, Generalized Linear Models Regression. Um, so let's see what the variance inflation factors do as K increases. And the variance inflation factors are the diagonal elements of this variance covariance matrix. So we want to somehow grab those diagonal elements. And so from uh, previous video 59, we calculated this expression to be this, this variance. 
and notice the variance inflation factors, the variance covariance matrix, you know, divided by sigma squared, which is the variance in the ideal case. So now to to just isolate the i diagonal i i diagonal element, you take the i row and the i column and do that multiplication, and it ends up being this. Okay, so th this is the uh, components of the i vector. Remember, these are orthonormal eigenvectors, and these are the lambda, the eigenvalues. So everything sort of remains constant, but we're increasing the shrinkage parameter. So this quantity goes to zero. So the i diagonal element goes to zero, and so that says the limiting, you know, the limiting value of the variance inflation factor goes to zero. And that's sort of another proof that we are shrinking the variance when we use ridge regression. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to derive the ridge estimator from scratch, and we're going to show that its relationship with the uh, lasso regression. Now, we're not going to do anything in lasso regression, but I'm going to point out in the video what you would slightly change to make it lasso regression. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.